All right, everybody, we're going to take a look at how to use a drum switch with a single phase, split phase, 240 volt motor. And specifically, the model that we're going to be looking at is going to be this drum switch made by Square D or Schneider. The, what a drum switch is, is it's got a handle on the top that you can push into either direction. When you push into one direction, you're going to go and run your motor in reverse. When you push in the other direction, you're going to go run your motor in forward. This one is a very robust drum switch, very commonly used. And one of the cool things about this one actually is that if you remove that little screw from the top there, you're going to have access to the central shaft, which on most of these AG2 drum switches here, if you take that shaft and you rotate it by 180 degrees, you're able to go and change this thing from the default factory configuration of maintain, content, um, maintain contact inside of there into a momentary contact. Momentary contact is great for things like winching, where you want to have an operator that's watching what's happening at all times, whereas maintained contact is great for things like running belts, where they want to be able to turn it on and then just walk away from it. We're going to talk about two main methods of doing this. We're going to talk about the five wire method. This is the most commonly known one. It is always going to go and be the proper method, meaning that we're going to have full protection inside of it. Uh, if the motor has an overload, I'm going to put a little asterisk next to it because not every motor does have an overload. Stick it down here as well. Uh, but if it does have an overload, it will keep the overload in line so all the current goes through it at all times. There is another method that is very, not, very much not widely known. It's a three wire method. Obviously, it's going to go and have a cheaper cable. Five wire, you're usually going to have to buy a six conductor cable. Three wire, you're going to buy a three conductor cable. But it does have some danger in the fact that the overload is bypassed during starting. Not during running, just for that couple of milliseconds or seconds that you might have of starting that we're going to have. So there can be some danger from that if not properly you know, allowed for on your external circuitry. Let's talk real quick about the motor and the drum switch itself before we start to go and apply them. This is my standard diagrams that I'm going to go and have for a AC uh, split phase motor. Each of these here is going to be my run windings on one and two, three and four that we are going to go and have. This would be where I would go and have that optional overload heater that's sometimes going to be built right into the motor. Not every motor has this and this is not the same as the overloads from your control circuit. This is something that's actually built right into the motor, usually seen as being a little red push button that we would go and have on the side that's used to go and reset it. But all the motor current flows through this component that we're going to have inside of here. We're going to draw it like normally closed inside of here. This winding over here is going to be my start winding. And the direction that current flows through this thing is going to go and determine the direction that the motor is going to go and start in. If we flow current through from 5 to 8, we're going to go and start inside of our forward direction. If we throw flow through from 8 till 5, we're going to go in our reverse. And so to interchange direction on a 240 volt motor, you're always going to be swapping around leads 5 and 8 off of these ones. And that's what the drum switches themselves are going to do. We'll follow through on our main current path here as well. This is my main current path that would be going through my run windings at all times when this thing is going to be energized. And if I just change colors over here, this would be my alternative path that is only going to exist during startup where my start winding is going to be engaged. The start winding is going to be controlled by this, which is going to be called a centrifugal switch. And what a centrifugal switch does is it opens at approximately 75% of my rated speed. So as the motor starts out from zero speed to 75% speed, it's going to stay closed. And then once I get up to 75% speed, it's going to go and open up. So the instant we power the motor on, both of these currents are going to go exist. We see that all the current, yellow and blue, both passes through this overload over here. But once that motor spins up, you're going to hear it kind of wind up and then you hear click. And that click is when it opens up inside of here that cuts out my start winding and then we're just running off of the run winding itself. All right, moving on to the drum switch itself. Uh, inside of the drum switch, there are going to go and be six individual components. They're all isolated from each other in the center or the off position. When I put it into forward, what we're going to go and see is we're going to see connections between one and three, two and four and five and six that we're going to have. And then if I were to move it to reverse, I see connections between one and two, three and four, five and six. I'm going to use these same colors on my diagrams that are upcoming, where we're going to go and use blue for my reverse connections, red for my forward connections. We're going to dot them out over there. And five and six over here, we use that so that we can cut off all power to my windings and actually control the motor through it. This would be the internal switching that I would have for a standard 
five lead type of motor that I'm going to go and have off the drum switch. We see the drum switch terminals inside of here, top to bottom, left to right, being one, two, three, four, five, six. We see that this path gets made in either the red or the blue position. That's going to be forward or reverse. And that in forward, we're making these ones. And in reverse, we're making these ones. Real quick, looking at my currents that I'm going to go and have traveling through here, my main current is going to go and be enabled through the closure of the five, six contacts through my overload heater that I'm going to go and have inside of there and back to the supply so that's main path of current and then my starting current if I start this thing in forward is going to go through like this we're going to go into here we're going to go in like that and we are coming into five traveling out of eight and back to my supply once again all currents are going through here so five to eight starts me in a forward direction when this thing comes up to speed this one disappears that's going to be the end of it if I wanted to look at this thing inside of a reverse one, once again, when we start up, five and six closes in for my main current, but now we're also gonna have our start current that is going to come through. And now what we're going to see is that we are going to come into terminal number eight first, through out of five, and then back to my supply. Once again, all currents going through that overload. This is a safe connection. This is gonna go and start us in our default reverse direction that we are going to have off of these. Let's look at actually applying these ones onto a setup that we have over here. This is going to be a standard motor. It is going to be colored off here to my NEMA standards that I'm going to go and have. Some cases they do have the color coding on the wires, other cases they don't, um, but it is a NEMA standard. You should go and see all these numbers on here. One, two, three, four, five, and six that we're going to go and have. This is going to be the drum switch itself. It looks like this. All the wiring usually comes in through two knockouts that are going to be on the bottom over here. And then ahead of this, I have got a disconnect switch because the drum switch itself never actually shuts off all power to the motor itself. We're just going to jump back to this one over here just so you can see that off of here. If I follow this path back, even if the switch is off, I see that I have got power through all the way up to here, which means that if somebody opens up the motor and they just are trusting this drum switch to go and isolate it, the drum switch does not provide isolation. It only provides control. Okay, we'll go back into the actual drawings that we are going to have over here. Let's start with our wiring at the motor itself. We're going to go and have two terminals over here, terminal five and terminal eight that we're going to have. Terminal five is going to get run into the terminal number one that we're going to go and have. Terminal number eight is going to go and get run into terminal number four. They're going to be sitting kitty corner across from each other inside of that top section, section that's interchanging that we have. Then we're going to go and take the other components that we have inside of there. We've got two and three we're going to take those two we're going to junction two and three together so that's just going to be done with a moret that's going to be done inside of there and then we're going to go and run from two and three around to terminal number three like that over there last of all we're going to go and take a look at terminals one and terminals four over here terminal number one is going to get taken into terminal number five over there and terminal number four i don't have a yellow marker we'll just have to use this pink for that one uh, but terminal number four is going to go across to terminal number two like that so we see in between the motor and this actual switch wherever it's going to be located we're going to need to have five conductors that are going to go through you are obviously going to go and have a bond inside of there as well that we're going to use for our grounding and bonding that's going to tie all of these things together we're going to pick that up in the box we're going to take it back to our main ground that we're going to have somewhere there as well but I'm ignoring that inside of here because that's a given that we're going to be using one of those we just want to focus on the colored conductors that we have over here following in from this side over here I have got my line one I'm going to take my line one and my line two through a disconnect switch that's going to allow me it's going to be motor rated disconnect switch that's going to allow me to go and isolate this motor that I would have and then I'm going to go and run out of the bottom of this switch over here on my T1 terminal. I need to go and feed that one across and into my 5-6 terminal that I'm going to go and have over there. And I will take my terminal number 2 up and across to this one over here. It's going to tie in. Let me just redraw that a little bit neater over there so it's not crossing as many things there. It ties into terminal number 2 over here. So we've got a complete connection that we would use over there. If you're doing this one in the field, just pause it right here, trace your wires off of that one. You should be good to go, once again, for a default rotation. 
let's move on from here uh, to our next, oh wait, before we do that, we're just gonna mention one more thing. Do make sure that you put some sort of a danger sign on this motor that is going to go and direct people that they need to go and use that switch to go and isolate. Otherwise you could have somebody that relies on this switch and there's still live electrical inside of that one. Okay, moving on to the next one that we have over here. The next one is a three wire control, which is fantastic because that means that we are going to go and have only three conductors between my drum switch and my actual motor itself, which is a far cheaper type of cable. The guts of this one are that basically this connection that we're going to have inside of here, two, three, five, are all gonna be connected together. And then based upon where the drum switch is put, it is basically gonna swing this thing. So it is gonna be across like this, meaning current would be going through from five to eight in that direction uh, across there. Or if I go into the alternative direction, it basically makes the connection across like this. Once again, eight and five off of it, but now the current is gonna be going through from eight till five. So we're gonna have motor reversal. There is a danger off of this one though, because if you take a look at your starting current, your starting current is going to go and bypass the actual thermal overload we have inside of there. Let's follow through with proper colors though off of this one. We're gonna start with our AC line. AC line is once again taken through five, six. That's always gonna allow us to completely kill all power to that motor itself. We see when we close five, six, we're gonna have a path for main current that is going to go and travel around through and all the way back. So my run windings are going to go and be energized off of this one. My start windings, will start these into a forward direction that we would go and have. If I take a look at that one, we'll start from here. So once again, it's gonna be going down following the same path that we are going to have over here. We go through, down, into here, through here. And then we can run through this way, forward, up, and all the way back home. And so what we see is that all of the current, both the yellow and the blue, is gonna be traveling through this overload that we are going to have on the motor itself. This is my start one, it's gonna be engaged. We're gonna start in the forward direction. And when that centrifugal switch senses that we're up to speed, it pops that, and now we've just got run current that's going through here. Let's track it back for the alternative direction that we have, which was gonna be, uh, reverse direction where we're entering into eight. So the blue lines that we have off of here, this one is the only time when we have a little bit of danger. And that's because what if I follow this current path that I have through here, all the way back up and around there, I see that now I'm not capturing both currents through this overload that I'm going to have attached here. We can still deal with that. And honestly, if it's just a short little startup, it's probably not gonna be a big deal because the overload is not an instant thing that we're gonna have off here. It relies upon an overload happening for a while. So uh, if this motor starts fine, it's gonna go and kick out at that point. Even though we started it like that bypassing the overload, all of my main run current still runs through the inside, which means that we will have protection off of it. All right, let's move on to the next page and take a look at how we deal with that, practically speaking. Practically speaking, the big difference between this and the last one is that now instead of just having a two-pole disconnect, I have now put in a two-pole manual overload that we are going to go and have here. It's gonna have current sensing on here. That is going to allow me to go and set that up so that even when we're bypassing in the reverse there, that one built-in motor overload, I could still monitor that through here if I am greatly concerned about it. We're gonna go and run our line into here. We're gonna go and run a second line into here. And then we're gonna do what we usually do when we've got a three pole device on single phase. We're gonna run that through and around so that we're running it through all of my individual overloads. This is standard inside of the field. Taking a look at my motor, we're gonna go make a couple of junctions that we're going to have. First of all, we're gonna start inside of the motor here where we are going to have two and three and five that are gonna be junctioned together. So one morette is gonna go and tie all three of those together just inside of here. We aren't taking those leads out of the motor. We are going to go and take lead number one that we are going to have here. And we're gonna run that one across to terminal number four. And then terminal number four is just gonna go and have a little jumper that's gonna be placed inside of it down to terminal number six that we're going to have. We're gonna take terminal number four of the motor, this one that we have here, and we are going to run that one across to this terminal number one that we are going to have. And then last of all, we need to take terminal number eight from the motor itself. And this one is going to go into terminal number three that we are going to have up top there. 
So now we have got all of my motor leads terminated inside of here uh, into the actual drum switch that we're going to have. And then we see now that we've only got three conductors that are going to be running through, which is fantastic because that is a smaller, lighter, cheaper that we are going to go and have like that. Moving on to my power supply. On the power side, we are going to go and take in my line number one over here, and we are going to go run that into a contact. We're going to put that right down there into number five. Let me draw that with a proper hop because we're going over top of another one that's the same color. Uh, we're going to run that one into there, and then my second line, the one that we have run through, through the manual overload and back out of the bottom over here, we're going to just jumper that one this and it is going to run up to here. Once again, uh, you can pause right here if you're wiring this thing in the field and following along, this will give you the three conductor method of reversing a motor. It does bypass that actual thermal that we're gonna go and have on here. It's usually seen as being like a big red rubbery button that you can use to go and reset the motor on most of your NEMA ones if they have that. It does bypass it during startup in the reverse direction, but depends upon the amount that you use that. You remember that it is still gonna go and have this thing in place for my regular run current. All right, same as the other one though, uh, do put on a danger sign that we are going to go and have off of here because once again, uh, we do not have the ability to go and isolate using this drum switch over here. Make sure that you indicate that they, if they wanna work on it, they have to flip it off either at the breaker that they're gonna lock it out or off of this one here, but that this switch itself does not have the ability to isolate. Okay, that's that.